Butler, Estadio Guasustemoc, named after the last and youngest of the Aztec emperors. A stadium with a capacity of 47,000, but not full today. Italy, as Enzo Berzot had promised, not panicking as a result of their opening draw with Bulgaria and fielding the same side. Argentina showing two changes, bringing in Borghi in attack and Cusiufo in defense. And the game, 30 seconds old. Very important game indeed for Italy. With only one point, Argentina at the top of this group with two points as a result of their 3-1 win over South Korea. And we're delighted to bring you this game in much happier circumstances than when we saw Argentina last time because we had been preparing to be back up for the Soviet Union-Hungarian game. We had all sorts of electronic problems. And so with five minutes notice, we took the Argentina game, which had only been a highlights game on our program. And we hope that you weren't too disappointed. But now we are prepared, and this should be a very well-balanced and interesting game and almost a must game for Italy. Certainly necessary for them to draw. If they lose, they could be in very, very serious trouble because Argentina already have two points. Italy and Bulgaria one each and the luckless South Koreans no point. One of the things to take note of is to see if Italy has nominated someone to mark Diego Maradona. Ruggeri crossing that ball and uh, Giovanni Galli not having any problem. Jufo, the newcomer, in the center of the Argentinian defense and wearing number nine. And Borghi, a most promising forward from Argentinos Juniors, so they're putting some space as we see Borghi making progress up the right side. Argentino Juniors player and hoping that they're going to get some help for Maradona and Valdano. We had a little bit of psychology at work earlier on. It was uh, published that Maradona, Valdano and uh, Burogaccia may be uh, unfit and unable to play. And I think this was a little bit of psychology before the match on the part of the manager, Carlos Bilardo. So it's Italy moving up the right side. Italian drums in support. Maradona moving in midfield three Italians in attendance beats them all tries to take on a fourth and fails there's a good ball for Bruno Conti used of wandering rather listlessly in the first game responding to that criticism but he's cross headed away by the Argentinian defense Italy still pressing beat up referee towards the kick to Argentina above, but the Argentina and Italy have played three times in World Cup play, with Italy winning two of those uh, meetings, so the advantage is to Italy, and we'll have to see what the outcome is like today. And it's possibly based on this history that Enzo Berzot, a very experienced Italian manager, who also coached their 84 Olympic team, was quoted as saying that he didn't think they'd have a very serious problem, and felt confident that they would beat Argentina. But it's the early feeling out stages Neither side made any real press. Bruno Conti about to take that throw in and deciding not to. 
Referee telling him to get a move on. That's Goldarisi, who in reality has replaced Paolo Rossi. The aging Paolo Rossi, who did so very well in 82, Golden Boot Award with six goals, not able to get his place on the Italian side. Goldarisi, really the man who's keeping him out. looking there, Cabrini, perhaps one of the best, not perhaps, but one of the best left backs in football. Italian heads go up, Argentinians too good for them, but Conti a threat on the edge of the area, dispossessed beautifully, good tackling by Argentina, the Italians are feeling, and the referee, Jan Kista of Holland, perhaps going to have his hands full here. Must, something must have happened in the middle of the penalty area that we couldn't see right off the bat in a group of players because there has been something called here. We're just waiting to see what, he, what the referee, Mr. Kaiser, comes up with. Well, we're still not quite clear what it is, but it is a penalty without a doubt. So whatever it was, which we were not able to see, Jan teacher of Holland who also refereed in the 84 Olympic Games having a word with the Argentinian goalie Neri Pompidou who has the grave responsibility of guarding this eight yards wide goal mount crossbar at eight feet in height and it will be number 18 Alessandro Altobelli to put them one nil ahead in the seventh minute of this game so that a very good start for Italy as Alto Belli easily beats Pompido Pompido going the wrong way getting of course as goalkeepers have to because they really don't have much of a chance Alto Belli fooling him and putting Italy one nil ahead what a tremendous start for the Italians it's basically exactly what they needed to get one goal up and let's hope they don't start defending right away they were caught last time I think they will have learned their lesson Oh, Argentina trying desperately for a return penalty. Maradona most upset that they didn't get it, but the referee waves play on. This will be a pulsating game, a game full of tension without question. Emotional players on both sides. Discipline will be all important. But Italy a goal ahead by the man who gave them their goal in the 1-1 draw with Bulgaria in the opening game in Azteca Stadium. Maradona fighting back for possession. Batista pushes it through. There is a foul on Valdano, who scored two goals for Argentina in their game against South Korea. Plays for Real Madrid alongside Hugo Sanchez, the great Mexican star. So it will be Maradona, as expected, to take this kick. This is not too far away that it isn't threatening. Will Maradona have as much success as when they played Korea? He took a couple of free kicks there, both resulting in goals. Frantic organization by the Italian defense. Good heading out by the defense and Bruno Conti on a break down the right side. Italian support moving through. Argentinian defenders, that's a good attempt. Good running into the middle of the area by Italy and showing there that they are a threat on the breakaway. Argentina surviving that threat and bringing it out. Maradona looking for help from Gritti, the referee dissatisfied. Kick to Argentina. Probing down the left side. And it's Italy to bring out this ball. Cabrini pushing it back to Shirea, Italian captain. Shirea plays for Juventus, as do many of this Italian side. Not unexpected for 
manager Bearzot to stay with the same team. He said this, and interestingly, in 1982 in Spain, he went through the entire World Cup with only 15 players. So when he feels his team is playing well, he likes to keep it stable. Fortunate to go through a game or a World Cup series with only 15 players because there's always a risk of injury. But this is what Bearzot did in 82 and he stays with the identical team for Italy's second game. A very, very critical game for them because if Argentina win this one, they've almost certainly clinched a berth in round two. For a jogger, pushing it through for Valdano. Italy beginning to mark a little tightly and a little further away from their area, realizing that with a goal lead, they must not allow Argentina to draw level. that ball was wasted and Maradona well marked by Salvatore Bagni who seems to be the man who's been given the task of marking so Giovanni Galli I'm sure that Maradona won't find as much room in this game as he found against South Korea the Italians are masters at defense and masters of the quick break as we saw a little earlier Italians working the ball out of trouble. That tackle will receive a kick to Italy. Right on the shin. Everybody who's played football knows what that feels like. So it's Sharia looking for men who are free, deciding there is no one close, taking a longer ball through the middle. That's no big problem for the Argentinian defense. We turn to mount one of their own. Burachaga bringing the ball out. Maradona back to link. Always available. Baldano, Maradona trying to take too many men on. But fortunately the ball ricocheting and back to Argentina. The Italian defenders, numerically superior, and Cabrini. Inside to Begomi. Begomi looking for a chance to get that ball across. And Pompido having no problem with it and setting Maradona free. Good ball up the right. Valdano trying to get his cross in dispossessed and tackles back and it will be a kick to Italy may see some histrionics in this game both of these sides inclined to act as Altabelli lies on the turf prostrate referee will have none of it Jan Keats of Holland waves play on Altabelli decides he will get to his feet and the referees have been instructed that no one comes on the field until they signal trainers on and there is a fair referee on the touchline who ensures that this doesn't happen so that we don't have the field cluttered and if Altabelli wants attention he'll have to do what he's doing now and that is go off try to appeal to the linesman that he's genuinely in need of attention and the Italian trainer coming to minister to him on the touchline game goes on Bergomi pushing his back to Galli Rear the captain. One goal ahead still. Bagney. Argentina now trying to push very hard and press a little, but to no avail. And very, very attack in the Italian tackling there it results in an Argentinian free kick and Maradona probes the left side this might be dangerous but number two was in there Bergomi to stifle that threat and snap out the attack and World Cup 86 on CBC Sport will continue in a moment
Looking for tips on fishing? Ask a 50 problem solver. <laughs> With some rugs stuck to the bottom of your boots, you wouldn't slip on the rocks. Well, put a wheel on the front of your canoe, you wouldn't have to carry it on your back. <laughs> anyway, a little piece of my hair around the hook, and I told you they'd bite. <laughs> yeah, but without my custom-made fishing net, we never catch the biggies. <laughs> You'll never find a better bunch. Fifty's the one. You'll never find a better beer. You've got it. For the families, for the heart that beats in them, for the traditions that live in them, for the lessons they teach that can't be learned anywhere else. For the big families and the small families, for all the families. Our Catelli family of pasta and sauces. In each, you'll find that special care we know it takes to make our family a part of yours. Catelli, we care to be a part of your family. And with one third of the first half gone, we're back at Utemok Stadium and Italy have a 1-0 lead over Argentina Urachaga playing the ball well to free himself of his Italian markers Batista pushing it through to Valdano again beats his man very cleverly before he can't stay on his feet the Italians were masters of defense, and as we said, we thought they might do some special man marking jobs. And number 10, Bagnini, is following Maradona around. And if you watch, number 2, Bergami, is following Valdano around. So it's going to be a tough afternoon for these gentlemen. Conti staying well wide on the right side. of Conti's passes went to Paolo Rossi in 82 had very telling effects and they will be relying on Conti to use his experience and his superb passing ability to set some men free up front but so far the Argentinian defense well able to handle the threat Wisti Borghi Borghi having his first game, a lot expected of him. Plays for Argentinos Juniors. Strongest club side in Argentina. Maradona. And perhaps unnecessarily there, Italy conceding a corner. Bergomi not realizing that there was no real pressure. Poor communication there between Galli and Bergomi. And Italy conceding a corner. Presumably, his form is hollowed. Maradona will take. Just amount of anticipation now by this crowd. Italian defenders massing. And the blue and white stripes, Argentinians also, packing the area. Maradona requests that the photographers with their huge telephoto lenses give him some room to take this kick, to bend this ball in. Well punched out and then cleared out by the Italian defense. Maradona makes himself available. Wide on the right. Beats two men beautifully. What superb artistry. And then tries to do it perhaps one time too many with four Italian defenders in close proximity. But the goalkeeper may have been unsighted had he got his shot in. But that was Maradona at his superbly balanced set. Just beautiful to watch shows you why he's rated as one of the best players in the world. Two defenders came out, one to cover the other defender in case, and he still managed to beat both of them. Argentina clearing, Bruno Conti not having any great height to use, but jumping well, but again Maradona on the right flank. Quickly gets his cross in this time. The very sound, hard tackling, well experienced Italian defense able to handle it as Conti brings it up to the left side to Altabelli. Now Italy spreading it around in midfield, moving to find Spence, favoring the left side again. Conti now from right to left. Takes his man on, but he's in for them. By number 14, Whitney. On Italian throw. Be taken by Cabrini. Likes to come forward. 
and can score goals. Pushing it back to support Dolderisi. Long ball for Cabrini. Well tackled. Good tackle. Going for the ball by Jose Brown. Strange combination of names. Latin and English. And Argentina moving down the middle. An easy ball for the Italian defence. Cabrini throws the left again. Finding space. Cabrini on hand with a short pass. But Conti it is. Made himself available on the left. Muffed that ball, I think but took advantage of the dummy, but failed to cross with any real advantage. And Maradona picks up the ball and sets the Argentinians on the attack again, but that ball was deflected, and it's an easy ball, but the referee awarding a kick. So far, I think we'd have to call this a game of defenses, with both defenses handling the attacks of each of the opposition very well, and most of the game happening in the midfield. As, as has been the pattern in most of the games that we've seen. Maradona coming back. Again, very tight marking by Bangui, but resulting in a kick to Argentina. And this is a very interesting contest because they are teammates normally. Both play for Napoli in the Italian league, know each other very well. And Bagni has the unenviable task of marking the maestro Maradona, whose artistry we saw just five minutes ago. I would think that's why Enzo Berzat probably has Bagnini marking him, because he, they know each other so well. He would hope that he would know which way Maradona is going to go. Italian defense well up to that threat. Maradona again. Maradona being fouled against South Korea that resulted in... The Argentinian goes Borghi thought about having a shot there. Put it out and Italy concede another corner. So Argentina undoubtedly threatening as Shirea put that ball out for a corner. So another corner from Maradona. Borghi didn't make it, there's a chance here. And a field for handball, it's refused, and still the ball is not safe, but now it is, at least for a while. Argentinian still protesting to the referee that that was handball, he'll have none of it. But they chip it in again, another chance. Valdano not able to get hold of that, and Bergomi, his marker, lost him for a moment. The Italian defence look a little disorganised on that one as the ball dropped down. And Argentina's best chance by far so far. These two markers, Bergomi on Valdano and Bagni on Maradona cannot afford for a moment to relinquish their marking task because these two can score goals. So they have a very, very heavy responsibility in this game. Shirea moves it out to the edge of wood. Shirea pushing the ball forward. Altabelli calls and gets it. Cabrini, who's wandered up the left side as he is wont to do. Argentina marking a little bit more intensely as Di Gennaro and Galderici now. Galderici very mobile. Beautifully balanced runner. Takes his man on and gains the corner. Galderic is showing that he will be a threat if he's given the ball with any time at all in or around the area. So it will be Bruno Conti to move over and take this corner. Altabelli's in here. Galderic will be in. Four Italians in the area. Pompido on his goal line. Italians in the area trying to free themselves of the markers. Conti takes this corner, but a bad, bad ball. I think Conti was looking for one of those near post corners that Mexico worked so well in their win over Belgium. Cabrini, probing forward. 
Galderisi. Cabrini overlapping. Fortunately, does not make the most of that opportunity with a good cross. But we expect Cabrini to make a lot of road on this left side. Loves to come forward. Superb defender who loves to attack. And will be a threat to Argentina, Argentina on this left side. So Batista bringing it out. Moldano forward. Maradona in possession. Crowd expectant as Argentina mounts mount this attack. Maradona closely shepherded again and dispossessed. Good marking that time. From the appeal for a ball in touch. And the appeal is acknowledged. And the Labatt TV series will return in a moment. Andre LaChapelle knows quality when she sees it. When people talk about the good life, what they really mean is good friends. So when I offer my friends a beer, I give them the best. John Labatt Classic. Carefully crowns and brewed in small quantities. One of the world's longest aged beers. My friends and I agree. Classic tastes smooth and rich. It's a truly exceptional beer. Make yours the best. John Labatt Classic. Lettuce, onions, pickles, real cool. Then you're gonna love what this size got. Mm. And when you taste the sizzle of McDonald's pure beef, you go crazy for the size of pie. Mm. And when McDonald's adds tomato, mayo, processed cheese. To the great taste, 100% pure beef. It's too far on the That's McDLT. McDLT is how McDonald's makes lettuce and tomato sing. It's a good time for the great taste of McDonald's. Back in Wautemo. Score unchanged. And 27 minutes have elapsed in this first half. Very finely balanced game. Altobelli. Galderisi showing his face. A very, very lively striker. Eager to take his man on. A field for obstruction, a field denied. There was Altobelli up there who took that pass. There was four Argentine defenders and only Altobelli up there. He's going to need a little bit more help up front if they want to score another goal. Which he tried to get through there, but found assistance in the form of Maradona. Batista tries the right, but it was a poor ball. Good, and good Italian anticipation, but they get it back again. Borghi. Maradona inside the box, tries to turn it inside, Borghi again, can he get this cross in? Just over for a goal kick. But an Argentinian threat from these two very talented players, number 10, Maradona, and number 4, Borghi. So the Italians must concentrate. I think from Argentina's point of view, the person that's going to turn the game for him is definitely Maradona. We're all waiting for that little bit of magic, but they both have to try and get more men forward. But it seems like in some of the other games that it's going to might be the defenders that make the difference. It's Cabrini overlapping, as we've seen in some of the other games. Jose Brown had plenty of time there, but uh, misdirected that ball. Cabrini was Cabrini was fouled, and the kick has been given by the Dutch referee. Cabrini, a very well disciplined defender. Italian captain Maradona Borghi's moved to the inside right position but that's too far for him badly directed ball there to Borghi from Maradona Italian defense making an easy job of that one Schreer here's Cabrini ever eager on the left side that's an Argentinian ball. And uh, the referee awarding a kick against Cabrini. Taken quickly. Batista. Maradona. 
ever available. Referee allows the foul, plays the advantage. And there, a kick against Napoli, who also takes an elbow in the mouth for his trouble. Looking for some help. Tries to get down on the ground to get more help. The referee ignores it. For his part in the foul, he got an elbow in the face and it looks like he's got a bit of blood coming out of his nose right now. It's same DiNapoli receiving treatment. Number 13 played an energetic game in the opening game against Bulgaria. Nose bleeding quite profusely, being plugged. Played a very, very energetic game, at least for the first hour of the opening game. We were quite impressed with him. Very impressed for a newcomer on the Italian scene. To see the tackle coming up again. It was a good hard tackle by De Napoli, but I think he might have got the worst of it. Every forward always tries to get his own back on the defenders, and I think that time the Argentine won that uh, little decision. There's a kick to Argentina, Burachaga. Picks Argentinian over towards the far post. Argentinian head to it, but not with any power or direction. So it will be a goal kick to Italy. Ruggeri it was, who had a goal against South Korea. Valdano had two. Beautiful header by Ruggeri against South Korea, and that's what he was up there for, but unable to get the clean contact so necessary to directly pass the goalkeeper. So it will be Pompido. Sorry, it will be the Italian goalkeeper nationally, Giovanni Galli, to take this kick. Wrong end of the field. And now, this time, it is Pompido. Batista. Burachaga. The Napoli challenge there, but the referee played the advantage very wisely. Argentina still have possession. Maradona. Italian defender able to block it, but a second chance for Argentina. And the cross goes behind. But he gets a corner for it. Some great work there by Conti was normally a forward or a deep-lying midfield player who's coming off a long ways back to help the defense. But again, that's the way Italy plays. They play a total defense and then the quick break. That was Gary who Conte took on. Gary won a corner. Here it comes. Punched out by Galli. And Italian pressure, but not quite able to reach that wall, but almost caught the Argentinian defense napping. Borghi, Batista. Batista moves it out to the right. We see the nice kick for Maradona. And he gets his foot to it superbly. What a magnificently opportunistic goal. Maestro Maradona showing why he is one of the greatest footballers in the world. A half chance, he gets round the marker and takes it first time. And the goalkeeper, Galli, could only stand and watch. Goes to show you why we said that if the game was going to be broken open, it would be by a little bit of genius from Maradona. And here he is, just a little flick, left Galli standing totally looking at his defense saying what's going on here why would you let him through and too fast for the italian captain gaetano sharia a superb goal by this man maradona to bring the side level one goal each and the crowd love it the argentinian supporters are going mad here and so it will be italy to kick off with just 35 minutes of this first half gone and everything balanced again in an already finely balanced match Beautiful goal by the Argentinian skipper. Altabelli fell on the left side. The Italians may be needing some nasal or denture treatment if these arms fly around like this. 
very careless use of the arm we're seeing rather too frequently and it's most unfortunate because it does spoil the game and Jan beats her of Holland it in control and will uh, keep this game under control because emotions may rise, particularly when it's so well balanced in the score 1-1 one, one with just over 35 minutes gone. So Cabrini will take his kick, lock it down the left side for Aldebelli, and Italy get another free kick for this challenge from behind by Ruggeri. Cabrini trying to move it inside. Italy threatening. The Napoli is brought down by a body check by number four, Borghi. So after a slow start, the game warmed up and the Labatt TV series will return in a moment. Now when you come to Swiss Chalet, you're going to flip. It's a plump quarter chicken. It's fresh cut fries and special tangy sauce. All of this for a limited time only for just $3.49. It's how great you feel, it's how great you feel. I told you. At the end of the meal, Swiss Chalet, okay. A singular hot parlor as we share a glass. And whenever I sip it, I'll say this wine's got class. There's something in our parlor that makes it taste divine. So cool and crisp and white. Oh, that's some kind of wine. They say that with our parlor, and this is good to hear. You really can't go very wrong. It's always a good year. Back with the score the same, but emotions boiling in this Kwaukemok Stadium. That for a charge on the goalkeeper by number 10, Salvatore Bagni, following a free kick to Italy when Di Napoli was felled. And Jan Kieser of Holland is going to be thoroughly tested to keep control of this game. He's got to stamp his authority on this game now because emotions are, emotions are boiling. Giuseppe Maradona and Baldano moving through. Argentina on the rampage, but the Italian defense up to it, and Conti free on the right. This game has increased in pace, it's increased in emotion. Altabell is in the middle waiting if Conti can get his crop in, but he can't get his crop in without his feet. This game is definitely heating up. That goal by Maradona has got both teams very inspired. Argentina's coming forward more in Italy on the fast break. But as we can see, any time there's an attack, it's almost always snuffed out by a tackle. And sometimes a very unfair tackle. Maradona showing his captaincy responsibilities for Argentina now just tapping Conti on the head there to say, it's okay because the emotion, we apologize. The apology doesn't uh, reduce the fact that this is a kick to Italy. Di Genero, but a wasted kick. Offside. Pompido challenged heavily by an Italian front runner, which resulted in the emotions boiling up. And the crowd are into this game, and the pace of the game has increased, and we have six minutes left in the first half. Score, Italy 1, Argentina 1. Bad ball intercepted by Italy. Altabelli in possession. Good tackle going for the ball, but a little hard perhaps. And the free kick given to Italy. It was a 50-50 ball. Argentina got to it first, but not to the satisfaction of the Dutch referee. Di Genero. Di Napoli, rather. In the wars a little. Slugged nose. Victim of two fairly forceful tackles. But the referee gets in quickly to overreact to that, he must. Cabrini up there again. Having words with Ugeri. Maradona saying, calm down. This is not the Maradona we saw in 1982. 
This is the Maradona who has matured and he's accepting the responsibilities of captaincy very well indeed. Maradona said before this World Cup, you know, he wanted to show what type of player he was. He did not have the best of World Cups in 82. But so far in the two meetings that we've seen him, he showed his captaincy and his matureness and he scored a lovely goal. Again, for Pompido to settle down and Argentina to bring it out and calm things a little bit, settle the emotions. Urachaga, Guizzi in support. Maradona comes back, pass on to the ball and play the role of general. Batista, Chupo swings it to Borghi. A long probing ball. Urachaga on the edge of the area, back heels it but misdirected. And three Italians have no trouble clearing it. But Shirea make, make, better make sure that he gives that ball quickly to Galli. This, as Sam said earlier, the fourth consecutive meeting between these two sides in the World Cup. So they should be knowing each other pretty well by now. Shirea moves it inside. And Altabelli not able to get control of that ball. Big Pin, Altabelli is known as. Seems a reasonably appropriate nickname. Tall and slender, but a very, very good footballer. Batista moving it forward. And Argentina elects to go down the left side. Nicely beaten by Borghi. Burachaga switching to the right side now. Maradona on hand but not able to control the ball. And Italy bring it away. Bani almost looking like a 400 meter hurdler as he goes over his man there. But the ball into touch. Ruggeri takes the throw. Brown, Batista. Aldano, scorer of two goals against South Korea. Christy. And Italy intercepting. Conti intercepting, but not able to get control of the ball. Argentina played about in their own half. Batista. Morgi looking for a run. Nicely intercepted by Ward and Italy now resume the attack. Argentinian markers coming in, Maradona on hand. Di Gennaro coming, but wasting the ball. But Valdano getting a chance. Altabelli, but courageous moving out and the whistle has gone. So Altabelli's press. And uh, the Dutch referee, Jan Kaiser, suggests that that may have been handball. And so, that possible Italian threat is snuffed out. This is the time in the waning minutes of the first half where both teams have to be very mentally aware, even though the heat and the altitude. Because this is when they're a little bit tired, they might just relax a bit, make a mistake, and it would be very drastic for them. When we say waning minutes, we mean about a minute and a half. The referees have been very, very tight on time. Occasionally it seems to us ignoring injury time because they've had very strict instructions to try to keep these matches played to time. So the Argentinian build-up again, but very slow. Gary has freed himself on the right. Gets it dropped in, and that was a close one with the Italian defense standing stagnant. But the flag was up for offside. But I think the Italians would have been wiser to ignore that flag. And now over to Chris Cuthbert for an update. Jeff Italy all is still scoreless, but Michel Platini with the free kick off the bar. 0-0, France to the Soviet Union. And back here in Puebla, the game in the dying seconds of the first half. Very, very evenly poised. 
game which has come even more to life in this last 15 minutes. The crowd participating fully. The 45 minutes is up. So Jan Kayser checks his watch. And in seconds we will hear the whistle which will signal the end of the first half. Now the side is walking pace and they now can walk very slowly because the whistle has gone to signal the end of the first half. A very interesting, very well balanced half. Italy won, Argentina won. A beautiful goal from Maradona following a penalty from Altabelli. And the Labatt TV series will return in a moment. Labatt brings you Michelob, a beautiful American beer. Brewed since 1896 from the finest ingredients available, Michelob is the most popular premium beer in the United States. Now brewed right here by Labatt, Michelob is the one beer with the exceptionally light, smooth taste you expect from a great beer. Pour yourself a good-looking Michelob and discover an American beauty. is divided in half. Some can go to the net, some can't. There are good backhands and bad ones. And most important to Bic, some guys have normal skin while others have more sensitive skin. So Bic made the new Bic Orange. It shaves sensitive skin gently and closely. So remember, for normal skin like mine, the original Bic White Shaver. And for sensitive skin, the new Bic Orange. Oh, by the way, some people love John Macro and some people, eh to our World Cup Control Center in Mexico City. Half time in that key Group A match between Italy and Argentina. And all four teams in Group A will see action today. So let's take a look at the countries and see how they stack up in that section. Mexico City and Pueblo are the sites for competition in Group A. Today's game coming from Cuauhtémoc Stadium, a 50,000-seat facility in Pueblo. The tournament opener between Italy and Bulgaria was staged at the 114,000-seat Azteca Stadium. Other matches will be played at Olympico Stadium in Mexico City. For Italy, the road to World Cup 86 has been arduous. The team has yet to regain the form it showed in 1982. And a repeat of their triumph in Spain will be difficult. At the 82 Mundial, Italy surprised the world with its stunning play en route to a victory over West Germany in the final to claim the 12th World Cup. The great star of the Mundial was number 20, Paolo Rossi, who had returned to the game after a two-year suspension. And it indeed was a glorious comeback. Rossi scored six goals, three against Brazil alone, and he scored in the final against West Germany to clinch Italy's championship. It was a crowning moment for Rossi and all of Italy when the final whistle was blown in 1982. The fans in Spain were appreciative of Rossi's play and that of the Italians. And so was the Italian president. Dino Zoff, the Italian goalkeeper and captain, accepted the World Cup trophy from King Juan Carlos of Spain. The Italian victory set off a series of spectacular celebrations throughout Italian communities all over the world. In the Italian districts of Montreal, Toronto, Vancouver, New York, and of course Rome, and all over Italy, it was party time. The second team in this group is Argentina, along with their star number 10, Diego Maradona. Maradona was their hope and then their disappointment in 1982. His reputation drew tight parking in Spain, and the physical, sometimes violent play was too much for him. He was red-carded and not a factor in the tournament. Since then, Maradona has matured and represents the heart and soul of the Argentine team that wishes to repeat the glory of their World Cup victory in 1978. The magic that had him tapped as the world's premier player five years ago is in evidence once again. He's capable of leading his side out of the shadow of that 78 championship team with which all comparisons are made. 
Argentina and mostly Maradona have a lot to prove. But number 10 is unquestionably a great international player. And Mexico may be where he is rediscovered. He's off to a great start, setting up all three goals in Argentina's 3-1 victory over South Korea, Diego Maradona. Olympico Stadium in Mexico City, where Bob Beeman set his electrifying long jump record in the 1968 Summer Olympics, will also be a site for Group A action. The third team in this group is Bulgaria. It's a good side that should not be underestimated. In a qualifying match against France, Bulgaria posted a 2-0 victory. The Bulgarians play a physical, tactical game, and although winless in 13 previous World Cup games, they're expected to be tough. The World Cup is usually full of surprises, and the Bulgarians are capable of just that in advancing to the second round of this Mundial. Their abilities were well illustrated in this game against France, and also in the tournament opener, that 1-1 tie against Italy. The fourth team in the group is the representative from the Asian zone, South Korea. En route to Mexico, the South Koreans posted a victory over Japan. The last time a Korean team played in the World Cup was 1966. North Korea shocked Italy 1-0, eliminating the Italians. And they let Portugal 3-0 before losing 5-3. Little is known about this Korean side, but international experts say South Korea is a team which could raise some eyebrows at this Mundial. In the opener, they got off to a slow start against Argentina, but showed promise in the second half. So there you have Group A, the favorites are Argentina and Italy. You're watching them today. Bulgaria, South Korea are quite capable of providing an upset. And later today, Bulgaria and South Korea will meet at Olympico Stadium. We'll update that game for you throughout the evening when we bring you the game between France and the Soviet Union after the late night local news. The Labatt TV series returns in a moment. Got a dream deep inside. Gonna ride it through the sky. Petro-Canada is proud to support Canada's national team and youth soccer across Canada. I'll stand with the best, the best in the world. Petro-Canada. Our energy is Canada. Kaufman King Treads. For a tough job, get one of the toughest boots money can buy. Rugged leathers. Steel toes. Safety soles. CSA Grade 1. Tough souls, guaranteed not to separate. Comfort from day one. Remarkable Kaufman King treads, tough enough to take anything you can throw at them. Four teams playing this afternoon who could very well be playing in late June in the World Cup semifinals. France and uh, the Soviet Union playing in Group C action in Lyon. They are scoreless. And in Puebla, it is Italy and Argentina tied at one. Yesterday, a much awaited day in World Cup competition as action began in Group E in Corretero. It was West Germany and Uruguay. And the Germans got off to a very shaky start. Watch this clearance pass. Matthias sends it backwards, and he gives it to Altamendi of Uruguay. And he beats Schumacher in the German goal off the bar and in. And it was one to nothing very early for Uruguay. The Germans mounted a comeback however Matthias here trying to atone for his previous mistake fires the shot through the hands of Alves and just wide of the goal but West Germany kept coming at Uruguay and finally in the 84th minute their work paid off as Alves ties the score and indeed relief for the West Germans who almost lost their opener but Alves makes sure they don't a 1-1 tie in Corretero that was Group B action in Toluca and the first World Cup activity ever for Iraq as they met Paraguay and early in the game Iraq almost scores off the corner 
The ball is cleared out, but another opportunity coming up for Iraq, and the left foot volley just goes over the bar. Paraguay, though, settled down, controlled the game, and here is Julio Cesar Romero, the top player in South America last year, former New York Cosmos player, scoring the goal, which would give Paraguay a one to nothing victory over Iraq in Group B play. Meantime, at Nixon Stadium, on the outskirts of Mexico City, the final two teams saw their first World Cup action in 1986, Scotland and Denmark. And the Scots had a strong first half. Here is Goff to Charlie Nicholas, but his shot is blocked at the last moment. But Scotland controlled first half play. Denmark came back in the second half, and it's the brilliant Craven Elkjar who scores, beating Willie Miller left foot inside the bar. And that one's worth another look. Elkjar, the leading scorer in World Cup qualifying, giving Denmark a one to nothing lead, which they would hold Elkjar's left footer, and Denmark gets the successful World Cup debut with a one nothing victory over Scotland. First game in World Cup competition for Denmark, we have two season World Cup teams here. The Labatt TV Series returns in a moment. This is CM Today. Running a railway so efficiently that we can track each rail car by the minute and carry information far beyond the reach of railway lines. To serve this land today and in the future, we must work this harder way with lean, compact efficiency. Working the CN way into tomorrow's world. Harvey's has a new sensation. With our salad story, add our chicken fingers, Ooh. and you're talking glory. Our salad's always fresh, our chicken solid white meat. Any way you dip it, it's a real mouth water and treat. In a beautiful sight, we make it just right. Harvey's big salad and chicken fingers, a beautiful thing. Italy and Argentina tied 1-1 at the half in a game that got better and better as it wore along, and it also got more emotional. And you'll notice that the superstars early in the going at World Cup 86 are shining. This is Altabelli, who scored in the opening game for Italy after a rather innocuous play in the box. Italy was given the penalty kick, and Altabelli makes no mistake. You'll have another look at it. Pompidou dives to his right as he guesses, and Altabelli easily goes the other way, his second goal of the tournament. Argentina, though, fought back. They had a couple of good scoring chances here as there is some disorganization in the back of the Italian defense. But they're able to clear the ball and maintain a one to nothing lead until this play. Just he starts it. Valdano, the two-goal scorer in game one. Perfect pass to Diego Maradona, the left foot. Half volley into the back of the net. A spectacular goal for a spectacular player. Ties the score at one. Maradona set up three goals in the first game, including two by Baldano. Baldano returns the favor here, and there's the left-footed goal, which has Galley frozen, and it is a 1-1 tie after 45 minutes. Second half is coming up. World Cup 86 on CBC Sports returns in a moment. The people lose their hair worrying about finding a light beer with taste, and that me, Labatt Light, doesn't taste like water. Its original recipe gives you 100% great beer taste, nothing less. See, you're pretty bright, Mad Dog. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, uh, that's my kind of beer. Hey, what's up, Doc? I told you, a Labatt Light doesn't taste like water. Its original recipe gives you 100% great beer taste, nothing less. Mad Dog, when did you become a doctor? <laughs> British Columbia, Vancouver, and Expo 86, a spectacular national celebration where Canada will host the world. Five and a half months of entertainment, culture, and friendly people. Come to the province you've never seen. Come on! Come to a world so spectacular. Join us! Three-day tickets and information at the Royal Bank. to start the second half in Pueblo. Let's go back and rejoin Jeff Gowan and Sam Leonarduzzi. And the second half about to start. The referee checking that everything is in order. And we have been able to clarify the confusion over the penalty. 
Very few of the commentators could agree as to what happened, but we now know that Burrochaga of Argentina was accused by the referee of handling the ball. And that was the resulting penalty taken by Altabelli, which put Italy 1-0 ahead. Controversy will reign, of course, as to whether the ball came up and hit his hand or whether he tried to propel it and control it. If it was the latter, the penalty is deserved. If it was the former, of course, the referee should not have called the penalty. There we see the scorer of Argentina's goal, their captain, Maradona, and it will be a free kick to Argentina. Jeff, let's hope that the uh, second half brings us what we saw in the first half. The game started slow, but a very entertaining game through most of that 45 minutes, hopefully to continue for another 45. And this kick of Maradona's might well cause some dismay in the Italian defense as a three-man wall then moving forward, and he chips it to the edge of the box, and Burachaga hits it high, and not very handsomely, but the move was on, and Burachaga will wish to have had that one a second time. I think what we saw there was the Italian uh, respect to Maradona's shot. In, in hoping to cover the shot so much, they left open the small, small pass just to the side to Burachaga. Very well taken by Maradona. Intercepted by Bergamy. Bergamy, I think, having the better of his marking contest with Valdano, but I think uh, Maradona certainly coming out on top in his contest with his teammate from Napoli, Bagni. And the contest, of course, was you. The one problem, of course, with these type of contests when you're marking man-to-man, -man, you take a chance of taking two of your players right out of the game, which leaves you less players to go forward. And it could be very costly to Italy to be doing this. Conte moved from the flank to the middle. Says, I can't find men in space. Help me. That's a very, very poor cross. Tended for Altabelli. Nowhere on target. And the crowd tell Cabrini that they're not impressed with that quality. Cabrini saying something either by way of an excuse or by way of an incentive. But Argentina bring the ball out. Batista again. Maradona was going there, but uh, the ball was cut off by the Italian defense. De Napoli here the first nose in the first half. As we see Bergomi putting it out left. Cabrini. Altabelli being challenged by Ruggeri. And the referee says that's not a fair challenge, but it will be a kick to Italy on the left side. In the opening game with uh, Italy and Bulgaria, we saw Altabelli cause Bulgaria a lot of trouble by going wide all the time. And so far in the second half, he's just started to do that. That's when he seems to be most dangerous. The general will take this kick for Italy. Italy putting many in the box. Pompido organizing the defense. Argentinian defense caught the Italian strikers asleep there. If I was Coach Enzo Berzada, I'd like to have a few words with the, his Italian players. That's the second time they've been caught in an offside trap, and at this level, that, they should get caught that often. Giusti. Argentina bringing it out slowly, as usual but uh, very dangerous when they get into that area with men of the caliber of Borghi and Maradona. He's still looking for three men, making progress on his own, broke down here. Bagni left Maradona for a precious moment, but unfortunately gave up a free kick. some apparent pain, but the referee has accepted the fact that there is some attention required, and so the Argentinian support staff will minister to Tuesday. 
always a very difficult decision for the referees at this level because a lot of the players have become good actors and sometimes you can't tell whether they're acting or they are really injured so it's a difficult job for the referee Gucci has a, a good reputation of being untiring as a good attacker who also marks well and so he gains that kick. Maradona on the fringe of the penalty area as Giusti tries to ease the pain in that leg. Put a shark at a kick. Moved in for a fast moving Maradona, but the Italian defense snuffing out the threat. And if he wastes too much time, he'll lose it as he did. Fortunately for Italy, no Italian on that side of the box, but Maradona very quick to tackle back and take possession. The Italians must not be caught sleeping here, otherwise the score will be 2-1. Ragomi looking for support in the middle, but an Italian intercepted there by Argentina, Maldano, Batista in support, Borghi losing the ball, and Italy able to clear with De Genero out to Bergomi, to Cabrini. De Gennaro looking for men moving forward, and almost finding his target, but Pompido, the goalie, anticipating well. Gare. Nice passing to Borghi. Close attention by two Italian defenders who win the day, but it's Argentinian possession again. Maradona switching the ball. Trying a long one, juicy, but too far and not enough power. That's certainly no test for Galli. As we mentioned in earlier telecasts, with this rarefied air, we can uh, very realistically expect long shots, but we haven't really seen very many spectacular long shots. Perhaps the South Korean goal, one of the better ones, against this side, Argentina. But it's Italy in possession. And Napoli tries it, pass down the right side to Conti. Gives him the ball back since he was unable to turn. So he tries a different direction. Curea, the captain, out to Cabrini. Tight Argentinian marking. The displeasure of the referee, and uh, Cabrini is not given a friendly pat on the back there. But it is a kick to Argentina. Take it quickly. The game is open with the same pattern than it did in the first half. Both teams trying to feel each other out. Lots of things happening in the midfield, but nothing up front. Let's hope that it comes back to the state that it was in in the first half, especially the middle of the first half, where the game really opened up. Conte. Support on the right side from De Napoli. Italian building up a threat. Conte again tries to push it through the middle, but good defense by the Argentinians. Jose Brown clearing it. Nice back heel to Bagomi. Gomi wastes too much time, the tackle by Schuste, the play waved on by the referee. He was going for the ball, Maradona, closely attended. That was a chance for Borghi. He's on his own with three Italians around him. But surely that is a yellow card to Bergomi. And Bergomi is getting the yellow card. He will now miss the next game because that is his second yellow card. He got his first one against Bulgaria. This is his second. The next game he will play the role of spectator. The Italians protesting, the referee firm. So Maradona it is who will take this kick. And Bergami will be certainly spoken to by Berzot. But no team can afford to play without 
Gareth's defenders. What a charger it is with place this ball. Galley frantically gesticulating to get his defence organised. Borgi now moving into the Italian wall and unceremoniously pushed away. And the referee will give another yellow card. If they don't get away, they're required 10 yards. This is 10. This free kick is in a very important position. And uh, the Argentinians trying to deceive. The wall blocks the, blocks the ball again. The wall works again. And now to Chris Cuthbert for an update. Jeff, the Soviet Union has opened the scoring against France in Lyon. A gentleman by the name of Rats with the long shot and indeed a perfect one, beating back in goal for France is one nothing the Soviets. Thank you, Chris. And we were just remarking that although we have rarefied air and we anticipate a lot of long shots, there haven't been too many. That was certainly one of the better examples, that Soviet goal against France. Meanwhile, Italy against Argentina for one goal each, 10 minutes gone in the second half. Reasonably cooling breeze blowing here in Quote, Mock Stadium. An enthusiastic crowd who truly responded to the fine play in the last half hour of the first half. Haven't really had as much to be excited about in this second half. But with the score tied, we can expect some action as we move through this second half. A very, very important game indeed for Italy. They must try to get out of this with at least a tie. Argentina would like the win to clinch a place in the second round. The ball given away by Argentina there. Conti in possession, flips it through to the Napoli. He fell by Maradona, but the referee says play on. He was going for the ball. So Maradona wastes the ball, gives it to Bergomi. Alderici trying to make progress. Playing well back, this young striker. Genero. Well marked by, the, by number 14, Giusti. Cabrini gets in the cross. Aldebelli nods it back. A chance for Conte. Oh, and he hits the upright. What a glorious play by Aldebelli to Conte. That could have been 2-1 for Italy. A good cross, first of all. Altabelli controlled the header back to Bruno Conti. Shot from the edge of the area and hit the base of the upright. Tragic miss by Italy after superb lead-up play. But Argentina survived it. And it is they who have possession. Out to Batista. Uruchaga trying the quick short through ball. Aldano to Batista again, trying to beat his man, but the Italian defense outnumbering him and counter attack. The Napoli and Italy starting to get forward, and that a glorious chance miss when Christie fouled him, and Christie's going to get a yellow card here for this one. And the Labat TV series will return in a moment. Looking for tips on fishing? Ask a 50 problem solver. <laughs> With some rugs stuck to the bottom of your boots, you wouldn't slip on the rocks. Well, put a wheel on the front of your canoe, you wouldn't have to carry it on your back. <laughs> anyway, a little piece of my hair around the hook, and I told you they'd bite. <laughs> yeah, but without my custom-made fishing net, we never catch the biggies. <laughs> You'll never find a better bunny. Fifty's the one. You'll never find a better beer. You've got it. Canada is proud to support Canada's national team and youth soccer across Canada. I'll stand with the best, the best in the world. Petro Canada, our energy is Canada. And we're back with the score 1-1, but number 19 for Italy, Galderisi, will have a bruised ankle. 
Conti takes this kick as a result of that yellow card. We've also had, in our absence, the first substitution for Argentina as Maradona does a beautiful dive, about a 9.6, I think, for that one. He gets a kick for it, however. Going off, number two, Batista for Argentina. And in his place, number 16, Ola Ticochia. So we have a replacement of a midfielder for a midfielder. Argentina trying to attack down the left side. But De Genero handling the threat very well. And Di Napoli will take the throw. Long speculative ball by Argentina for Maradona, but the flag is up for offside. And uh, Ola Ticochia came on to the ground with his shirt outside his shorts. There we see him. The referees have been instructed to have players wearing shirts inside shorts, but Jan Kieser hasn't checked him yet. Here's Galderini, who was felled with a tackle to the ankle, trying to respond a little bit. Argentina on the attack. Having come so close to going down 2-1 with that beautiful shot by Conti, hit the upright. Maradona tries to weave his way through, gets a free kick, and Cabrini is complaining about this. Argentina's had a few free kicks, and most of them because of Maradona's dribbling ability. But they've not made much out of them so far, so let's just hope that this time we'll see something come a little bit more from it, because these chances don't come that often. And Maradona explains as best he can to the referee that unless this Italian wall gets back, gets back 10 yards, he cannot exploit his amazing ability to bend this ball or take full advantage of the free kick. The referee seems to have listened, and he's bringing the Italian wall back. If they don't get back, they'll get the yellow card. The yellow, yellow card has been uh, a chip by Maradona, and the wall inch forward, and uh, Pisa must be faulted here for not blowing up when that wall snooked forward instead of remaining 10 yards away. The referees have a very important responsibility here, and we've seen several occasions where they have not accepted that responsibility fully. It is rather a waste of time to get them back 10 yards and then allow them to sneak forward, and they've had clear instructions on this as the Argentinians take this driving corner, headed away, and Conti clears it upfield, and Alta Belli, or Galderici it is, who has a foot race with the Argentinian defender. But Garay, lots of time to get that ball back to Pompido. 17 minutes have gone in this second half. Uruchaga <laughs> probing the right side. Borghi. But Ertel Ward putting it into touch. We see. No foul to the referee. Play on. Ola Sikachea moving forward down the right side. Ball into touch. And we go to Chris Cuthbert for an update. Jeff, five minutes after the Soviet Union has taken the lead, the French come back and equalize, and it's a beautiful pass from Alain Jurette. Jurette with the ball sends it through into the box. Louis Fernandez takes it and beats the Zayev to tie the score at one in Lyon. So, so we're having two very well-balanced games. And this one here, beginning to mount in tension, still the score 1-1. Italy almost going ahead in the second half with a well-taken effort by Conti, which hit the upright following a beautiful ball headed back to him by Altobelli. But the upright saved the Argentinians, and so the score is still 1-1, and this crowd are getting into this game. Given. 
Alderici possibly remembering that rather hard knock on the ankle and wanting to bend his spleen a little on some of the opposition. Italy sees this opportunity to substitute Conti not seeming too pleased to be leaving the scene. Played with a little bit more energy than he did in the first game and Viali, Gianluca Viali will replace him. Jeff, if we remember the first game, it's exactly the same substitute that Enzo Barzat made in the first game. Bally, Bally coming on in that game against Bulgaria made some tremendous runs down the wing. He's a good, fast forward who likes to take people on. And there we see the effect of the stretch leg. Oh, and he's held. That is a disgusting challenge, and surely there will be a yellow card for this one. Yes, this is the second Argentinian booking of the World Cup. Maradona appeals to the referee, but his decision has been made. Maradona complaining perhaps that he himself was challenged late after that ball had been played, but it is a second card to Argentina. Fortunately, he's a man of considerable physique, was able to handle that foul very well, and it's a kick to Italy. Enzo bears on very consistent in the selection of his team and the selection of his substitute. And that is perhaps going to wait. And a shoulder-to-shoulder -shoulder charge, which the referee has said is fair. But that seems to be one of the fair shoulder charges. Players are allowed to charge shoulder-to-shoulder -shoulder as long as they are in contact with the ground and in playing distance to the ball. And the referee has judged that to be the case. Batista, who is no longer with us, so that could be Batista. But Achaga swings it wide. And Argentina favoring the right side in this build-up, now changing direction, and Borghi looks for support. Maradona trying to free himself, and does sufficiently to receive the ball, challenged by two Italians instantly. And Italy counter-attack. Good wide running by Galderisi. He'll get his cross in. No, he's right to beat his man again. Looks for support and receives it. Di Napoli. But that's a bad cross and they were offside anyway. Three eager Italians offside. And therefore Pompido had no problem. And Ar even if he'd had a problem, it would have been offside. Argentina again showing us their offside trap. Somewhere along the line they've been practicing this very much. And it's interesting that they would do it because normally you need a leader on the back to do that and normally that leader is Daniel Passarella who's not there but very aptly done Argentina playing the trap very well and catching the Italian General Daniel Passarella has had a bout of enterocolitis and has lost a lot of weight and the Argentinians resting him for a second game so they must be pretty confident in their defense if they can leave a man of Passarella's ability off but of course, if he's not fit, then there's no point in risking him. And so, Buro Chaga waiting to take this kick. Brown has been gone forward. Only the goalkeeper remaining in their half, putting forward men in numbers. Ruggeri came in very well came in very well almost got around the back of the defence and that could have been costly a good ball lost it into Ruggeri here he comes tremendous heading ability and of course he scored one goal already against Korea with that head of his De Napoli being challenged that is a throw to Italy which Napoli will take. Yali, newly arrived as a substitute, trying to take on and beat three men. He gets round them. 
Gets in his trough, he's got a chance, he dummies it, and that's a beautiful shot by Caprini, superbly taken by the goalkeeper, Pompido. That was beautiful football. A flash of inspiration, a beautiful dummy sold, and the ever-eager Cabrini. There was two dummies sold there, and Cabrini coming up from the back, showing us what a defenseman coming up late can do. But a lot of good understanding between the Italian forwards and a defender coming up to take a shot. And a cleanly struck ball with tremendous power, which Pompido did well to get down to. So we're seeing some end-to-end -end football, and there, some high-quality football to boot. In between, we have had some display of physical vigor, quite unnecessary, and spoiling the flow of the game. But every now and again, we get inspirational play, and that certainly was by Italy, as was the earlier attempt by Bruno Conti when Altobelli held, head the, headed the ball down to him. And earlier in the first half, of course, a player of genius from Maradona, and a superb goal from Maradona. So a mixture of a game, high emotion and excitement, punctuated by too much physical vigor and occasional brilliant play. And World Cup 86 on CBC. Give me a light. No, 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 Bud Light. If you just ask for a light beer, thanks. you never know what you'll get. Nah, give me a light. Nah, Bud Light. Yo. So if you want thanks. the light beer with a first name and taste, don't just ask for a light beer. Give me a light. Whoa. Ask them to bring out their best. Bud Light. New Bud Light. Because everything else is just a light. We're back with Argentina attacking. Just a moment ago, we saw a free kick from Maradona, which almost caught the Italian defense napping. Aimed for the head of Ruggeri and almost found it. But the Italian defense survived. Now they have a kick. Bagni still sticking to his task. Number 10 on the Italian side of marking Maradona. Very difficult task indeed. He hasn't quite been up to it the whole time. But he's manfully stuck to it. Di Gennaro swings the ball across to Bergoni. Who will watch the next game. Because he's had two yellow cards. Probing forward, Viali, newly arrived on the scene as the first substitute for Italy when Conti went off. And the crowd showing their derision of this sort of play by the Italians. Not forward thinking, forward passing football in this last few seconds. And the crowd whistling their displeasure. Over to Chris Cuthbert for an update on the France Soviet game. Jeff, the score is still 1 1, but the French almost take the lead. Sapira to our old friend Jean Pierre Papin. He's snake bit again. As Desire makes the stop, it's still 1 1 in Lyon. We are back at Wout Semok Stadium, and the score is still tied, and it is a kick to Italy. Not too far away, a very good try from outside the box. Bagni very pleased to get away from his marking responsibility and have a chance to shoot himself. What we're seeing is quite interesting with all the free kicks. Most of the time we're expecting direct shots, but both teams have elected to pass the ball one way or sideways to try and get around the wall and then have a shot. Very close by Bagni. Looking a little tired. Had to do a great deal of counter-running to Mark Maradona, and this is always harder than running when you are on the offensive. And we may see a substitution here, Enrique, Hector Enrique. It has been made, in fact. Enrique is on. Hoping to get on to that one. 
but it will be instead Galley who will clear the ball with a long throw. Italy move forward up the right flank and then switch inside. Perhaps beginning to see the first signs of fatigue or just a low energy phase in this game with 30 minutes gone. More likely to be fatigued with 30 minutes gone in this second half. A team which has acclimatized best will perhaps create the greater chances in the last 15 minutes of this half. I would hope, Jeff, that they're not both looking for a tie. I'm sure they'd be both satisfied with a tie. We've seen it in some of the other games, and hopefully that's not going to be the pattern. More valuable to Argentina than Italy, however. Argentina trying to find Maradona down the left, but a badly misdirected pass. Bagni has labored long and hard in his marking task, and he's looking very fatigued and showing the effects of this job. And it may be that Maradona finds greater space in this last 12 or 13 minutes. trying to spring Valley loose there, but uh, failing to find him. Di Napoli with this throw. A bit of ball juggling on the line by Galderiti. Not a lot of room for a maneuver, but he does get a throw to Italy. Taken by Di Genero. The crowd urging the teams on. resorting to back passing Shirea moving it out to Cabrini and back to Shirea and back to Galli and the crowd not liking this at all and it looks as if your worry Sam might be accurate in the sense that Italy is going to be prepared to take this draw draw much more of an advantage for Argentina than Italy because it will give them three points it will only give Italy two but they may be satisfied with this and it's disappointing well they're looking at playing uh, South Korea next and maybe they figure that's where they'll have their chance to get their two points and they'll I think they'd be quite happy to come out of this with a point oh another another elbow that's the third elbow in the face we've seen today Wild arms by these players. The referee either didn't see it or chose to ignore it. And that was Viali who got that elbow in the face. But he's up on his feet again. A hard man. Maradona. Cucufo moves it out. Ola Sikachea now trying to find room. Valdano pushes it back for Ola Sikachea. But he's trying to push and move. Stepping over and losing the ball. Urochaga trying to relieve the effort. Valdano pushes it back. So we have passing within the grid. And then all that passing within the grid ending with a foul on Christi. And a kick, therefore, to Argentina. Playing the grid formation. No great urgency to get this ball into a scoring position. Now a throw down the right side. Ruggeri tries to nutmeg him, but it is Cabrini who saves the situation. Altabelli back there in a defensive role, but not really cast in this role very effectively. Probably giving nightmares for the rest of the defense. Altabelli's happier when he's up front scoring goals. But Italy seem to have brought him back as an extra defender, and it's a role which he does not play particularly well. And I'm sure part of that reason is because they have two of their players doing a man-to-man -man marking job, so this takes them right out of the game. Napoli. Valdano has a kick against him. Napoli nurses the right knee. And the World Cup 86 on CBC Sports will continue in a moment. A little under 10 minutes to play in Puebla. 6,500 feet of altitude. The acclimatization being tested now. 
1-1 score. Di Napoli trying to make progress down that right wing, but not in possession. But it's Galderici it is in possession and gets a kick. But one of his two markers beaten. The second marker brought him down, and therefore it will be a kick to Italy taken by De Genero. Viale up in the area, coming to the edge of the area. Italians moving about, trying to lose their markers. No great urgency displayed. In fact, they're playing Argentina's way. And the crowd have had enough of this. But now they may have a chance. Viale. Oh, a hard drive by Di Napoli. Pels the Argentinian in the penalty area. Jose Brown it was who received that ball. And he's down. And little wonder. comes out it appears that the referee may have given a free kick we're not quite sure for what certainly can't be for the shot because the player is entitled to shoot and if a defensive player is in the way that's just too bad Italians and the Argentinians taking advantage of this break to try to get some liquid refreshment can't see what that kick was given for Surely could be, had it been handball, of course, it would have been a penalty. The kick is going to go to Argentina, and we're not at all clear what that's for, unless, of course, there was a linesman flag up for offside. It's about the only solution I can offer. Whatever it was, Argentina come out with it. Hola Ticochea and... Enrique, the two fresh legs for Argentina. Borghi and Batista are the ones replaced. And Maradona tries to take his man on, but number 10 marks him well. But I think Fanny may have had a free kick against him for trying to impede Maradona with that right arm. It's the snotty from Northern Ireland. It was that linesman Definitely made that decision there. He waves hard and with... Uh, a certain amount of confidence, so it is, in fact, a kick on the edge. Six men in the area. The header was too strong. Again, it was uh, Ruggi, Ruggeri coming in at the back who's caused Italy a lot of problems today on free kicks and corner kicks with his heading ability. But Italy survived it. Girea, the captain, brings it out. No great urgency. Very little urgency, and the crowd not at all pleased with this. But very clearly, Italy have made the decision that the draw is sufficient. Argentina appear to have made the same decision. Though Ruggeri, had he got that wall on target, would have changed all of that. A leisurely roll, almost long balling style by Galli. Wasn't a good ball, and Argentina have possession. Valdano. Countering by Italy, Di Gennaro counters, and it's an Italian throw. This game, with five minutes left, fading a little. Certainly not the emotion and excitement that we had in the final minutes of the first half. And the entire crowd whistling their displeasure. Now a chance for Argentina. Guruchaga, Maradona. Maradona goes down, but the referee says play on. And Argentina have the advantage. Enrique. Cross gets in. Oh, and Valdano just not able to direct it far enough right. Good cross from the far side, and Valdano's trying for the near post, just couldn't get the ball to go down. But again, Italy having a problem dealing with balls to the far post. 
twice in this last couple of minutes. Argentina may have gone ahead. Both headers off target. But the Italian defense, perhaps a little suspect, as Sam has said, to fall to the far post despite their, despite their vast experience. I think they might be getting caught in that little trap again of trying to go for a tie as they did against Bulgaria and it just in the last couple of minutes they've been lucky that it hasn't backfired on them. That pass intercepted by Argentina but into touch. And the referee gives the kick. Hola Ticochea moving forward. Very late stage, about just four minutes left by our watch. Number 13, De Napoli of Italy will come off. And he will be replaced by Giuseppe Barese. Number 11. De Napoli, who's had a fairly rough time of it, goes off with about four or five minutes left and is replaced by Barese. Barese can run all he likes now because there's no way he can totally exhaust himself with four or five minutes left. About two and a half minutes left and Argentina will collect one point from this if the situation remains as at present. But if there was a score from this range, from Maradona, by a long drive, it would be very much of a surprise. Instead, he's going to do what he did. And it's an easy ball into the hands of Galli. So in a matter of two minutes, as a result of two games each, Argentina should have three points and Italy two. Italy obviously anticipating two points from their contest with South Korea. Galderizzi, who seems to have recovered from that uh, harsh tackle on the ankle, still fairly mobile, may have some stiffness tomorrow. And Italy take a quick kick and continue to play the ball in the wrong direction. Rare plays it across the field. Bagney, who marked Maradona fairly successfully. Argentina showing some chance of a challenge there, Burachaga. But it's essentially playing the grid. A rather depressing attitude. And the crowd fairly obvious in their displeasure. minute left and virtually might even be shorter than 60 seconds but clearly the decision certainly by Italy is that they are satisfied with the one point and indeed in 1982 Italy played dreadfully in the first round played three games and drew three games and then came on in the second round to play superbly so maybe this is a portent of things to come certainly Enzo Berzot will hope so with their next game coming up against Korea, they just can't afford to take Korea too lightly either. At this level, I don't think there's an easy team in the tournament. Galderic is showing that at least if they'll give him the ball, he has intentions of moving forward. But back again. And the rather dismal procedure continues. Barisi. is it the Italians moving backwards to end this contest the goal by Altobelli and a beautiful response by Maradona Italy won Argentina won most disappointing last 10 minutes when the importance of not losing overwhelmed the desire to win the game by moving forward thinking forward and passing forward. So yes, a point each, but not gained in 
a display of splendid football, certainly not in the last 20 minutes. We saw occasional flashes of brilliance from both sides. Well, right. far too often it was a cat and mouse game trying to cancel one another out, with Italy having much more at stake than Argentina, of course, because of their draw in the opening game. Well, I think Italy, uh, about halfway through that second half, you can see was intent on going for the tie, which is very unfortunate. Lucky for them, it didn't backfire. But they needed that point a lot more than Argentina did. But I think Argentina could pretty well guarantee now of going through to the next round. So the players leave the field after a 1-1 tie. And the Labatt TV series returns in a moment.